good everybody it's your boy todd smith here once again alongside my tag team partner dale clifford out there in fernley nevada welcome to yet another episode of the no gimmicks podcast dale what's good my man all righty so uh we have wrapped up the month of march a uh yes, the have. month of march let me fix that another solid solid action all around uh, the world of professional wrestling uh, mm-hmm. A cu- couple changes I want to explain as we uh, go through our top matches here. We're going to give you five, but um, just because we're trying to keep the uh, shows nice and tidy for you, we decided that we're just uh-huh. picking one from a WWE pay-per-view, one from an episode of uh, Monday Night Raw, one from an episode of SmackDown Live, one from uh, 205 Live, and one from NXT. Yes, sir. So That way y'all ahead. don't have to sit up here and listen to us for damn near an hour talking about our favorite matches from the WWE. So yeah. this has been a way for Dale and I to kind of streamline things for you guys. So yes, as Dale just said, welcome to our top five matches from the WWE from the month of March. So let's start off with our first offering here. We have Austin Aries who took on Brian Kendrick, TJ Perkins, Akira Tozawa, and Tony Nese in a fatal five-way um, whoever would win this would become the number one contender and get to phase Neville at the Ultimate Thrill Ride. So, yeah, this was a pretty fun match here where all five of these guys got a chance to shine. Um, Austin Aries regains his momentum, which he lost prior to his injury, and earns a, t- a title shot against Neville at WrestleMania 33. Dale, what's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, uh, I kind of looked at this one in... And- we kind of had already seen some of the rumors that it was going to be Neville and Aries, but then you kind of just see the lineup here, and you're like, oh, this has to be Austin Aries for WrestleMania. Right, right. We've mm-hmm. already seen Brian Kendrick, TJ Perkins have already been there. Tony Nese, um, why he might be one of the more phys- um, physically imposing cruiserweights, he hasn't really done much. Akira Tozawa no. is kind of building... A uh, upstart, but he's in a feud with Brian Kendrick. So it just basically left it to Austin Aries. And we saw some pretty solid uh, cruiserweight to action. It just, the one yes. thing that just comes from this is, um, I don't know, was that we, keep, we keep complaining about 205 Live, and I think them running the shows after SmackDown, I don't think it's working because the crowd just seems like they're ready to go home. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 funny because you know Matt, my buddy Matt Vachinsky, he actually went to an edition of uh, SmackDown Live at the Mohegan Sun Arena out here in Connecticut not too long ago, and he said that that place had halfway emptied out by the time the 205 Live was being recorded. That's really a shame. Yeah, they've got to find a way to fix that. And I've said this once before. I think that the fans down there in full sail were the ones who got to see the Cruiserweight Classic, and they responded very well to these guys, and I think that they would be the ones who would respond the best to a a weekly show like 205 Live. How they go about fixing that, I don't know, but I truly believe that in some way, shape, or form, it needs to happen in the near future here. Um, Moving on to our next top match from the month of March from the WWE. This one is from NXT. We had the Authors of Pain taking on DIY for the NXT Tag Titles. Um, DIY, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa really pushed Authors of the Pain to a limit in this one. Um, the Revival made their presence known, but the AOP retained their NXT titles in the process. Dale, what you got to say about this one? Yeah, I definitely, this is, uh, where we've started to see some growth out of AOP. Um, mm-hmm. but I also think a lot of that has to go, um, be credited to Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah. Uh, but you also just see the size difference um, with these guys. And you're like, there's no way DIY can can knock off AOP. Um, Not believably. Obviously, we've seen the small champions win before. Um, like, Rey Mysterio was world champion. So, the smaller guy mm-hmm. can beat the bigger guy. But you just look at that and you're like, you just can't see DIY beating AOP. They're just going to run out of steam. Um, yeah. But AOP's gotten better. DIY obviously carried the match, and then we saw the Revival get involved, which ended up setting up the triple threat at uh, TakeOver Orlando. But definitely which solid action very good, here. by the way. 
Yeah, uh, solid action here again. DIY continues to be a outstanding uh, tag team. They're basically probably in our top matches almost every month since they uh, formed up. So, yeah, it seems that way. And like I said, it's just mind blowing to me that these guys had never ever tagged while they were out there in the Indies. This was a tag team, you know, one of the perfect examples where you throw two guys who kind of have um, similar, you know, size and look, and um, you know, the chemistry is just there. And they have really done, you know, as best as they could with what they were given here. Um, moving on to our next top match from the month of March from the WWE. This one was from the Raw Go Home show prior to WrestleMania 33. We had Kevin Owens taking on Sami Zayn. So basically the setup for this one was Sami Zayn wanted to be a part of the Andre Memorial Battle Royal, but Stephanie McMahon made it clear that would be no easy road for him. Um, thankfully, with a little assist from KO's former BFF Chris Jericho, Sammy was able to survive and punch his ticket to WrestleMania 33. Dale, what's your thoughts on this one? But I, I don't know the long history of Kevin Owens and Sammy saying I don't really know what else we can say. But these two get in, yeah. and they just make <laughs> um, in the ring, and it's just a wrestling classic. Like every single time these two um, step foot in the same ring, um, mm-hmm. these guys have absolutely fantastic chemistry which I think in large part dates back to the long history that they've been together all the way back to Ring of Honor when they were putting down yep. classics there too. So they definitely have a um, comfortability with each other that just absolutely delivers five stars every single time. Yep. Another strong offering out of these two. No bit surprised there. Uh, moving on here to our next top match from the month of March from the WWE. We had the Viper, Randy Orton, taking on the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. On SmackDown Live, and this was for number one contender for the WWE title. Whoever would win this match would go on to face Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 33 for the title. So, AJ pulled out all the stops in this one. Pun intended, including a feigned springboard from the apron that kind of left everyone kind of like, ha ha, he just did that to Orton. Orton went for the RKO out of nowhere and he completely fell on his back. Um, But in the end, Orton was able to catch AJ what an RKO out of nowhere, and he punched his ticket to WrestleMania 33. Dale, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, um, I absolutely uh, thought that the the little twist in the springboard from AJ, where he like springboards and fakes the 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 jump to catch to to get Orton to go into the RKO without actually catching it, was a nice little spot there. But again, yes, y- you have the guy that right now is the best thing going in WWE right now, AJ Styles and Randy Orton. Without question. Um, you know why Orton's been there for so long, 12-time world champion, going to be a Hall of Famer. So you put these two together, it's no doubt that it was going to be a, uh, for sure, top match quality, and it lived up to its uh, billing. And then obviously it extended into where we are. Randy Orton's got Bray White. AJ Styles has Shane McMahon because of the results of this thing, so. Yeah, yeah, and um, I think, you know, between those two matches there, I'm more actually intrigued, you're going to laugh when I say this, Dale, but I'm more intrigued by the Shane-AJ match than the bray um, Randy Orton match, because the more and more I think of it, what you said is true, I think this one here between Randy and Bray has to be straight up at WrestleMania. Bray has to prove that he is worthy of winning this title on his own. I know I kind of went back and forth with you there. I said, I think, you know, Harper might possibly get involved or I think, you know, Rowan might possibly return. But no, I think he has to get this one done on his own. But I just don't know what in the hell sh- cr- type of crazy antics Shane McMahon is going to pull in this match against um, AJ. I know it's built pretty much as a singles match, but I just see him jumping off of something very, very high <coughs> at WrestleMania. Yeah. So, so uh, it should well, be interesting to see how this one turns out. Seeing some of the images from um, the WrestleMania set, and you kind of just try to mm-hmm. figure out where might Shane McMahon pick a, a spot to go from, because that's the thing. There is no stipulation for this thing, so you've got the 10 count, so they can't go very far from the ring. Right. Um, so right. it will uh, definitely be interesting to uh, see what happens. <laughs> now, obviously, it wasn't going to happen, but I showed my wife a picture of the thing, and I don't know if you've seen a mm-hmm. cup, one of the images where there's a huge, gigantic ring that's just a display. On ring. top of the structure above the ring, yeah. On top of the structure above the ring, and my wife's like calling it, AJ's going to, or um, Shane's going to jump for that thing. I was like, no, that's way too high. 
<laughs> that's way too high, and it would take him longer than 10 seconds to get up there. So by the time he get up there, the match would have been ended because he would have been counted out. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just going to say this as well, too. Who knows? We still got about another uh, 24 hours before that show takes place. They might just change it to the last second and just say, you know what? With you two, with all your history and whatnot, there's no way in hell that we're going to you know, let you have this match in the constraints of a regular wrestling match. We're going to just go ahead and make it no DQ. <laughs> and you you know that's what people want to see you know so it, it ought to be interesting uh moving on here to our top match of the month of march for the wwe we had neville the king of the cruiserweights the wwe cruiserweight champion taking on one mr jack gallagher um at fast lane so gallagher looked to be in control at one point during this match even delivering one of those sick looking headbutts to uh to neville um, but in the end, Neville reigned supreme as the king of the cruiserweights by retaining his championship. Dale, what's your thoughts on the uh, top match for the month of March from the WWE? Uh, I think it uh, delivered, and obviously Neville um, retained, which when we highlighted Fastlane, we thought was the um, the big success of that so that we stopped the um, hot potato of the cruiserweight championship, and now it seems like it's found a home there. Gallagher's got an interesting style for the cruiserweights. Uh, and I just think that uh, Neville has really boosted that uh, division up. Uh, I had one quick yes. note. I just want to make sure to add into this since you brought up that we're uh, 24 hours from WrestleMania. We just need to add that this show was recorded before WrestleMania, but will air after WrestleMania. Um, so Thank you, Dale, for pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, I'm going to correct myself on this one, too. It's about 24 hours from the conclusion of WrestleMania 33. (laughs) But yes. If the show runs long, pretty much. (laughs) But yes, again, uh, we recorded this before WrestleMania happened because the month of uh, March had already ended. But uh, yes, it has. But in terms of just trying to get out everything edited, uh, this won't be out until after. But uh, and our number one match was Neville versus Jack Gallagher. Uh, Definitely. We had two matches. That we picked out from uh, 205 Live here in the Cruiserweight division. So obviously, they can deliver in the ring. They just got to figure out some way to make the environment of 205 Live better. Yes. Yes. We, we've already tossed out our suggestions to how they could go about improving that. You know, like I said, because the, the, they're adding more talent. You know, the rosters definitely became deeper for 205 Live. You know, there's more Grand Metallic. This guy, Akira Tozawa from Japan, who's just flat out amazing, you know, and with Neville asserting himself as the top heel, that in itself really, um, you know, gave them a boost. The big we bit, can sit here and uh, talk. Go, just, go for it, Dale. What's up? I, I was just going to say is that the big thing, though, that has come from Neville and his heel turn is the shift in moveset because uh, he's gotten rid of the red yes. arrow and uh, numerous other yeah. moves for, for an array of um, submissions because I also see that he's working on the rings of Saturn now, too, so. Yeah, which I actually like. I did that as a um, as a finishing move for him. I'm all for that. Yeah. But we can sit here and talk about the top matches of WWE all night long, but unfortunately we can't. We have to go ahead and bring this episode of No Gimmicks Podcast to an end. So thank you for joining us in this edition of the top matches of the month of March. We are No Gimmicks, No Image, all wrestling all the time. Please subscribe to our official YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash the No Gimmicks Podcast. If you would like to be eligible for our giveaway through Pro Wrestling Tees, please make sure that you subscribe publicly. Check out Craig Perkins' articles on ProWrestling.com. We would like to hear from our viewers, so please leave us some feedback in our comment section. Also, please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at the No Gimmicks PC. Remember, sharing is caring. Feel free to share the links to our episodes with other professional wrestling fans on your social media accounts. That does it for this episode of No Gimmicks Podcast. For my tag team partner, Dale Clifford in Fernley, Nevada, this is Todd Smith in Bristol, Connecticut, signing off. Until next time around, y'all take care. <laughs>